Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I know you're waiting for this. So am I. It's time for our marquee international speaker to deliver the keynote address. He is a pioneer of the commercialization revolution in the UK and Europe through his tenure at Blue Water, thanks to his innovative concepts and out of the box thinking. He founded and established Mall Solutions Europe, which has over 10 billion pounds in assets under management or consultancy and has offices in London, Manchester, and Barcelona. He's a much sought after speaker at international fora. He wrote the RICS commercialization code of practice for service charge white paper. He co-founded and was founding chairman of the BCSC commercialization committee. And he's on the editorial board of Shopping Center magazine to deliver the keynote address on transformation today, tomorrow, and beyond for our shopping centers. Please warmly welcome founder and chief executive officer, Mall Solutions Europe, former head, Blue Water Shopping Center UK, and our marquee international speaker, Byron Lewis. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Byron Lewis. Uh, good morning, everybody. And, uh... Uh, it's great to be here in, here in Mumbai, in India, M my first time here, and I've, uh, I've had a, a great time discovering your, your beautiful country, and, uh, and this morning I'd like to uh, give you an overview and uh, thoughts of, of my experience and background in shopping centers about what's happening now and, and, uh, and the challenges that the industry is facing. And so, going through the introduction and agenda, uh, what I'd like to do is to first of all give you a bit of background about myself and then a quick overview about, about my company, Mall Solutions Europe, and then get to go through about how retail is changing, uh, what the future is going to look like, uh, all the technological innovations, and then going through some design concept stores, the rise and rise of uh, food and beverage, some game-changing concepts, and then any Q&A. So I've got uh, lots, to, to, lots to work through and here this morning, and uh, without any further, we've got... Uh, yeah, so uh, about myself briefly. Uh, so uh, originally I'm from Australia, uh, where, where I was a retailer um, in, in different sectors, uh, which I, I sold out, well, I started, re well, I started working in retail when I was 10 years old, and then uh, I had my first retail business in one of Australia's biggest shopping centers when I was 18. I, I then sold that business when I was uh, 21. Uh, I traveled the world, and then uh, my, for the, my former landlord, Lend Lease, uh, when, I, when I got to London, they said, what are you up to? And I said, well, in, enjoying life. And they said, well, come and work for us. So I, uh, my, my first, well, went from being a retailer to the commercial director of Blue Water, uh, which was, I must say, it was a, a massive change from being, from going from one side to the other. Um, and, uh, and so I had a tenure of three years uh, as a commercial director of, of Blue Water, which was an amazing asset. We, uh, uh, it was a development cost of 600 million pounds. Um, and then when I, well, uh, when, I, when I left there, it had a valuation of over two billion pounds. The, the, the rent roll increased from 55 million to 90 million pounds. Uh, and then after six years with Lend Lease, I then uh, set up Mall Solutions Europe, working with shopping center owners uh, around Europe. Uh, and uh, and, we, and that's what we do now. We've got uh, about 100 shopping centers that we manage, and uh, a further 300 that we consult on. We work uh, across the board, um, and also I'm very passionate about retail. It's, it's what I've done all my life. Um, uh, from, yeah, and in the UK and around Europe, I'm very much working with the ICSC. Uh, I lecture with the European Property School for the ICSC. Uh, I founded the, BC, the British Council of Shopping Centres Commercial Committee, uh, yeah, and very much worked through, uh, yeah, very much retail and shopping centres is my life. Um, and, and please, I'm, I'm here for the next two days, so I'm, uh, if you have any questions or you'd like to uh, have a coffee, please, um, I'm more than happy to. So, so about MSC, so we, we, we provide commercial solutions to shopping center owners, predominantly in Europe, but that's now expanding globally. Um, and we do that in a number of different manners, whether that from uh, w the engine of the business is up in Manchester, where we've got a team of 30 people, but we also embed people into uh, the management of shopping centers. Um, and very much, we don't have a one-size solution. Very much, we tailor our solutions for shopping center owners 
with the outcome being to deliver optimal commercial performance for your shopping center. Um, so our clients, we work with uh, a, a whole host of clients from, uh, from Westfield, British Land, yeah, pretty well uh, across the board, we've got a great client base and the business is growing uh, each year at about, last year we grew, we grew about 60% and we've had that for the last three years, so it's growing and growing. Um, but yeah, so enough about me and about, about, the, um, uh, about my business. Um, just going through to the, into the presentation now. So looking through, well, the world is changing rapidly. Uh, there's rapid change within uh, well, globally, and one of the biggest impacts of that change is the internet. Um, looking in India, the, the changes which you're seeing, well, in India, the changes are yet to happen, and you'll see in my slides uh, about this, but very much uh, in the UK, uh, internet is now one of the biggest threats to uh, shopping center owners and to retailers. Um, going through, um, yeah, and, he, and here's one of, uh, one of my favorite quotes from uh, uh, the good old Bill Gates, that uh, yeah, we always underestimate, we always overestimate the change that occur in the next two years, but underestimate the change will happen in the next 10. Don't let yourself be lulled into inaction. And I'll come through here and looking at some, some key slides that will uh, certainly hopefully open your eyes as to uh, what's happening in, in the UK and globally. Uh, here's an interesting slide looking at retail sales, uh, non-food retail sales uh, in the UK for 2015 and 2020. Growth? Well, in the retail side, there is no growth. In fact, between last year and 2020, retail sales in shops it will decline. Um, and there is new sh there's still new shops being built, and so there is big challenges facing the UK uh, physical retail market. Um, but you can see e-commerce, e-commerce uh, will in effect double between uh, 2015 and 2020. Um, and so when you look here, this is a great slide as well, which just gives an overview of the BTC e-retail e as a percent of total retail. So you're looking at the UK in 2014, 14% of retail sales were online. When you look at 2018, that's going to be 18%. And uh, when you look through, this gives a, a good context uh, through the different, uh, the different countries. And you can see, well, the change which we've seen in the United Kingdom hasn't happened here yet. But whether it's 2020 or 2030, it will happen. And it's, it's considerable. That, that, like, the, the change, like uh, last year in the United Kingdom, Amazon had sales of over five billion pounds. Uh, they're growing rapidly, um, and, and I think globally, the United Kingdom is leading the, uh, the world in, in the sales uh, uh, for, um, for e-commerce, for e-tailing. E um, and it's in, another interesting sector, another interesting slide here, looking at, uh, at where B2C is uh, in the different categories. So uh, we look through on grocery. So at the moment, about 5% of grocery sales are going through uh, e-commerce. That will grow to 8%. Uh, when you look at uh, music and videos, uh, that is now circa 80%, and that's going to rise to 99%. But you can see uh, the differences here of uh, where, where the spend is going, and, and the, the interesting where, where the categories uh, which categories uh, are being affected and, and where, where the money is going on, uh, on e-commerce and, and through the web. Uh, another in interesting slide here, like the, 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 the retailers in the UK, yeah, when you look at this, this is a, a, quite a daunting slide, for the last 10 years, you look at the, the growth of e-commerce participation and then you look at uh, the, well, the, the earnings for, for retailers of the top 10 non-food retailers. So in effect, in the last nine years, revenue has gone backwards. So the challenges that are faced uh, by retailers, well, I think, well, as I said before, the United Kingdom is leading the world in retail sales, for better or for worse, but certainly retail sales are struggling, and also, sorry, conventional retail sales are struggling, and then, uh, and therefore also the profits uh, are stagnating. Um, yeah, and retail is changing. Last year, Amazon, spent $10 billion on research and development. Um, and so going through, 
Um, yeah, and, and also now Amazon are now launching uh, their own stores. This is uh, the, uh, the first Amazon store, Amazon Books, which is in Seattle, which I must say, the experience there when you go in there, it is first class retailing experience. Okay, so yeah, the shopping center is under attack. What is the commercial world doing about it? When you look through, there's actually a website now called deadmalls.com, and they're scattered all around the world. Um, examples here and examples there. Yeah, there are around the world, shopping malls are closing left, right, and center. Well, not left, right, and center. It's still a very healthy industry, but there are challenges uh, facing the industry. industry. Um, and so, what is the future going to look like? To be excited. Humans love to share experiences with one another. We pride ourselves on being where, where, where the consumer wants to be. And those are big, wonderful, historic, well-known cities globally. I think the company has always been innovative for the over 50 years that we've existed. Technology is influencing the consumer more than ever. It's the convergence of the physical and digital experience that is just getting going. And that is the comparative advantage that physical real estate can have over simply online. What can Westfield do to ultimately push the industry forward uh, with, with great experiences, both digitally and physically for the consumer. So we decided to create an entity called Westfield Labs that just focuses on that. So the consumer gets a wonderful physical and digital experience that is comparative to no other form of retailing. We're creating an environment, a digital environment, that gives shoppers the ability to plan their trip before they come to our shopping centers. Things like shopping lists that allow the shopper to search the inventory from the hundreds of stores that trade in a single shopping center. Real-time information about products and services. Making that really convenient in a way that they can plan a trip when they're at home and have it with them in their hand when they get there. We want to create a seamless experience across all phases of the shopper journey. Reward them for their frequency of their visits to our shopping centers and guide them to exactly where they need to go, it all comes back to being a great host. The moment they arrive, they're instantly connected to a new world of personalized shopping, which is an important touch point for our retail partners to broadcast relevant, timely, and local offers about products and services that are physically available around the consumer in our shopping centers. One of the biggest initiatives with Westfield Labs is to completely reinvent wayfinding. Actually inject incredible discovery and use wayfinding and mapping as a mechanism to show users not only where to go, but actually what products and services and trends are around them. With one click, we're gonna make that all portable right to their mobile phone so they could take that with them and go right to their destination. We're not just thinking about the digital experience, we're putting a lot of work into the physical experience. Services like hands-free shopping. Once you pick out and buy the product, to have it delivered right to your car or even your home. We partner with some of the greatest chefs and restaurants and consumers love the food experience at our shopping centers. We want to make that experience even better using digital technology give them the utility to pick out what they want before they get there, have it ready for them when they arrive, to maybe even having it delivered to their home or to their office. It's all about providing ease of use and the most enjoyable shopping experience possible. When the shopper leaves our center, the shopper experience doesn't end there. Engaging the visitor with new services and offers generates continued loyalty and extends the experience beyond the physical walls of the shopping center. Whatever experience that we can create will ultimately drive transactions and business to our retail partners. The entire retail community is ready to embrace the change and the opportunity that can happen uh, with the convergence of the digital and physical world. Disruption can be scary. Change can be scary. What has made Westfield successful? over more than 50 years in many countries is this vision that you continually need to adapt. We hope you'll join us on that journey.
Yeah, so I hope, I hope that video is insightful and gives you a bit of a picture of, of what Westfield, uh, uh, is looking, what Westfield is doing globally. Um, and it's interesting, um, being an Australian, um, Westfield is, uh, my earliest memories of shopping was with Westfield. And uh, uh, back 10, 15 years ago, Westfield had nearly 200 malls globally. They have now sold 90% of those malls. All they want now is to have flagship malls in the biggest cities around the world globally. Like, for example, Westfield London, Westfield Stratford. Each of those malls takes over one billion pounds in sales. Similar to Blue Water. Blue Water does a billion pounds in sales as well. So what uh, Westfield's strategy is to have in iconic malls in the biggest countries, uh, sorry, in the biggest cities globally. San Fran, LA, New York, London. They're doing a big, uh, huge mall now uh, just outside of Milan. So they've cut all of that. All they want is the very, the gems of malls. The other 150 malls, they've now sold off. Um, another interesting, one of my clients which I've worked with for the last five years, a company called Into. So Into, they were the, uh, the, the leading shopping center owner in the United Kingdom. We, we worked with them uh, in Spain, where uh, they've partnered, well, originally there's a company called Eurofund, uh, which built a, a shopping center called Porta Venezia. So Porta Venezia, it's in the desert, in the middle of nowhere in, uh, in, in Zaragoza in Spain. Uh, when it opened, it was, and it still, well, still is now, it's, it's, it's the biggest mall in Europe, 230,000 square meters. Um, and very much, it's a shopping resort concept. You don't go there to shop, you go there for a day out. It's a total experience. It's retail, it's entertainment. You've got, uh, there's, uh, you can go surfing there. You've got um, a zip wire, rock climbing. It is a total experience. And it's, yeah, it's created around stunning spaces and it's bringing people together. And it's very much creating a shopping resort. Um, they're now planning, uh, I can't say too much, but they're, they're planning on a number of uh, further more of these throughout Spain, and they are, this is certainly the net, well, from what I've seen globally, this is the next evolution of shopping centers. It's a, it's a total experience, um, and very much the emphasis on very, about making it emotional, make compete, well, and keep, well, we're now competing for people's free, uh, free time, and very much thinking about the family, thinking about surprise, Create the family's second space. It needs to be something there for all, for every, for every team member. Um, and also making it a day out. And some of the stats, so that's a lovely photo there of, of Porta Venezia. Um, yeah, and uh, it's been a great to be a part of that since it opened. Um, and it, it has been a very successful mall. And considering the backdrop in Spain at the moment, you've got youth unemployment at 60%. You've got overall unemployment of 24%. But this mall, well, going through, yeah, uh, some of the snapshot of the figures uh, going through there, you've got the customer satisfaction. They're always testing and measuring, looking at the feedback from, from the customers. 98% of people who go there are impressed or are very satisfied. The dwell time, you look at the spending people spending about 2.6 hours there, which is nearly 50% more than the overall. You've got surfing, you've got rock climbing, it's got uh, 18 million visitors, and, and, and the spend there, it's 30% above the average. Um, yeah, and it's a yeah, global award winner at the Mapic Awards in, in, uh, in Cannes. It won the best shopping center globally. And very much, this is one of the future snapshots, snapshots of the future of shopping centers. Um, and let's have a look now, looking at, uh, at technological innovation. What are retailers doing to, to fight back, to, 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 to keep their market share, and to looking through that? So here's a, a classic one here, looking at Macy's in America. Uh, so they're, they're focusing on a customer-led experience. Smartphones and tablets um, uh, are now in the, in, the, in the changing rooms, and you can, in the change room, if you get a pair of jeans that doesn't fit, you can go on the tablet, request it, and then the new pair of jeans is delivered to you down a chute. It's quite amazing, that, and, and, and the turnaround is very rapid as well. It's, a, it's an amazing experience, um, which, yeah, there's one example there. Uh, Headspace, this is a, a personal interactive meditation pods. This is creating a zone for customers to engage in different experience, to come out. It's a, it's a five minute holiday where you've, you've had a busy day at work, you're in a mall, but you want to just have a five, 10, 15 minute, half an hour, relax. Uh, here's, yeah, it's a, a unique concept called Headspace. Um, yeah, or Torf's interactive trend browser, browser uh, focusing on the consumer led experience. Uh, interactive screens in store, consumers can browse, check stocks, and order, uh, and link tablets for kids as well. 
Um, try as social media rail. Social media likes and comments manifested in store, linking online and in-person shopping. Visual rep a visual representation of digital behavior. Likes and recommendations for items ranked in store. Uh, Placemaker, an interesting one here. This is an urban intelligence platform qualifying movement in cities. And we can understand basically your peel off rates, looking at who's going past your store and who is actually going in there. Similar to uh, another one which is by Path Intelligence, but this uses a, a, different, um, yeah, a, a different way of measuring it. And this very much understands the flows and target relevant customers. Um, pay by selfie. Uh, enabling a positive and different consumer experience. Um, going through here, your smartphone is detected by the Bluetooth at the, at the POS. Yeah. yeah, and a niche and new way of paying for, uh, for, your, for your products. Um, in Japan, we've got uh, uh, the humanoid information desk. So creating an exciting, stimulating customer experience. Something a bit different, and yeah, it, it creates a wow factor. And t it gets people talking about, oh, I went down to this mall and there's uh, a robot on the information desk. Something quite different. Um, yeah. Uh, then we've got uh, local measure, ensuring that the customer experience is tailored by context. Uh, you can gain fast and accurate consumer data, highlighting con what consumers are doing and saying in real time. And so that aggregates geo-tagged social media context content. Uh, yeah, I thought I'd just go through a couple of snapshots of the next evolution of, um, of retail and what they're doing. And so here's an example here. So O2, uh, which is the which, uh, number one, number two mobile operator in the United Kingdom. So what they're doing, they're very much uh, doing well, the next incarnation of what Apple have done with the Apple stores. This is the creating destination. So it's a, yeah, so very much technology workshops, themed inter interactive events. Yeah, and it's very much an experience-based uh, retail, retail concept. We look here, Sephora. So Sephora, um, very much, they're linking social media with in-person in, with in shopping. So experience shared with friends and social media. Uh, there's 12 beauty stations used to do in-store demonstrations. So this is not just going and buying uh, some cosmetics. It's very much an experience you're able to share and also driving awareness and footfall for Sephora. The feedback from this store has been phenomenal. Uh, or the Laces Shoe Store. So rethinking conventional designs. This is a, a new concept within, yeah, and qu qu color and quality of products reflected b back at the customer, mirrored walls, and uh, in the middle you've got uh, a showcase of limited uh, lines, and yeah, once again, been phenomenal. Um, so food and beverage concepts. Look at this one here, and this is very much looking at uh, creating a focal point for the community. So this is a car, a cafe and bar, which is doubling as a community hub, offering apprentices and work experience, literacy and, com uh, and training, and all the profits in this, in this shop are donated to local charities. Uh, cafe, fr cafe Fresco, prioritize changing consumer desires. Um, and look through, yes, yeah, so Anglo-Italian themed, concept store for larger handcrafted bakery officer, ba bakery offices. Um, and so then looking at the future of shopping center industry, so back when I started at Blue Water in, uh, in 2000, uh, the majority of revenue, and still is the majority of revenue, was generated from retail leases. But back then, back in 2000, back in 2000, there was about 10 million pounds which was generated uh, from non-core revenue. So that's everything outside of long-term leases to conventional retailers. Last year, that figure was approaching 400 million pounds in, in income to shopping center owners. It's been a huge, it's now a multi-billion pound industry in the United Kingdom. And it's similar from the research I've done and visiting your, uh, some of the malls here in Mumbai. And that's also happening very much a core part of shopping centers here in India as well. And it is actually, it's globally, it's a, um, very much what brands are now seeing. It's not just, shopping centers aren't just retail space, it's media space. When people, shopping centers are seen as, uh, as an aspirational, well, certain shopping centers are seen as an aspirational place to go. And that makes it an ideal location for brands to engage. And this is where, whether it be from, from pop-up shops, uh, pop-up shops, well, uh, they've grown rapidly now in the United Kingdom. Back in 2000, any, if you want to go to a shopping center, you had to sign a 15-year lease. Now, brands are engaging. Like, well, you look on the bottom corner there, you've got Mercedes-Benz, 
they spent a quarter of a million pounds for a 60 days in, in a shopping centre for basically a Mercedes-Benz pop-up shop. Yeah, and they, did, and they did that in the UK across 10 of the leading shopping centres. You're seeing brands heavily engaged into shopping centres. Um, and, and the revenues, as I said before, across the United Kingdom, four, 400 million pounds in revenue going to shopping centre owners through areas which didn't exist 10 years ago. And this is phenomenal. Uh, you look at the, the media spend like, uh, within, within shopping centres through brand experience, advertising, it's growing phenomenally. And once again, I think the United Kingdom is leading the world in, in what's happening here. But I must say, the world is rapidly catching up. Uh, yeah, so look, look through here. This is where uh, look, Port of Venezia, it's all about. It's not about, well, it's about retail, but it's about creating different things. For example, here, mini, they had mini bowling where you, people would get in a car and they're in a special uh, track where you have to actually knock down uh, pins. Um, and it's all about different experiences and, and yeah, uh, creating a, an environment which is conducive for customers. Um, here's, a, here's a little, another area which is coming in to be very, very important is food and beverage. Here's a slide from uh, ECE, which uh, ECE, if you don't know, is the largest uh, owner of shopping centers in Germany. Some, some uh, amazing stats here. So people aren't just going to shop, and similar here, here in India, people also want to go there and have a, for a bite to eat. And here are some, some stats there. So 60% of all people going to an ECE mall, uh, yeah, have something to eat. Um, yeah, they stay, yeah, some amazing stats there. And there's, yeah, one and a half thousand outlets, and it goes through. Um, so looking at the future of the shopping center industry, looking at the game-changing concepts so what's going to happen over the next five, ten years? So the unification of bricks and mortar and online retail. Unprecedented intimacy with the consumer. Conversion of shopping centres into communities. More environments that engage with the millennials. Incorporating distribution into shopping centres. Accelerated developer retail collaboration. Also the emergence of a new blended rental model. And then also the arrival of retail-friendly investment outlook. So going through that, so looking at, so the convergence of bricks and mortar and online. So shopping centers as e-commerce e participants, uh, sophisticated websites, on-site di digital consumers interfaces. Um, and also, on the other side, you've got, you've got e-commerce retailers coming into bricks and mortar stores. Uh, Amazon, well, from what I understand, Amazon have a massive plan to get into and have in the leading destinations to have their own, their own shops. Uh, yeah, and so very much what we're seeing now is a hybrid form of commerce is emerging. Shoppers moving between digital and in-store shopping, researching and experiencing products before purchase. Uh, but still saying that, um, well, showrooming is much talked about, where people go into shops uh, to, to showroom to compare with online, but what we're seeing is actually happening is webrooming, where people actually, they'll do the research and spend a lot of time uh, before they go shopping, and then then actually go for the experience of going out. Um, yeah, and still, at the moment, 90% of all retail sales in America still occur in-store. Uh, an interesting fact, like in Britain, when you look at what research shows that uh, with British people, what are their favorite things to do? Number one is go on holidays. Number two, what do they like number two? Is going shopping. Um, and so, yeah, so the bricks and mortar, looking here, this is a... The, the, I think the Westfield video gave you a good insight into what Westfield are doing, but very much looking through here, it's a convergence and then the merging of, um, of, of online and, uh, and, and physical retail. We call it, well, the, the term is, is coined omni-channel retail. Um, but, interesting, the, but interesting fact that 50% of all of Westfield retail purchases are influenced by online. Yeah. Uh, the, the next point is very much an unprecedented intimacy with the consumer. Beacons also have big implication. Um, yeah, so this is empowering shopping centers owners like never before, uh, providing continuous con connectivity con to consumers. And yeah, so beacons are our next big thing within, within, within shopping centers. Um, once again, looking at the unprecedented intimacy, you're looking through, well, now there's over a billion smartphones sold every year. De developers are creating apps for every imaginable use. And so emerging technologies have the potential to disrupt. And you're seeing that disruption now where of the global market, so there's, the retail sales globally are 25 trillion, 
25 trillion US dollars are spent globally um, uh, yeah, on, on retail. 10% of that now globally is through uh, online. So, two point, so each, each year, well, last year there was $2.5 trillion spent online, and that's going to grow. Um, yeah, so going through here, looking at, uh, so Arabian Centers using uh, mobile phones to track customer patterns. So that's a company called Path Intelligence. They very much, yeah, so they can understand where customers are coming in, how long they're spending, where they're going, and very much. To do that, by doing that, they're able to send tailored offers to smartphones, gather general dem demographic information, uh, improve merchandising, revenue, and amenities. Um, North American properties, the, the, a design discovery tour, use Facebook and consumer feedback on various design features. Experiential retailers and restaurants can assist in consumer in intimacy. Common spaces designed for recreation and entertainment. Leisure tenants are becoming more and more prevalent. Going back to the Into Euro Fund, the shopping, the shopping resort concept, where you, we're not just going there to buy a pair of jeans or a shirt, you're going there for an experience for a day out, where it caters to all parts of the family. Um, and the conversion of shopping centres into communities. It's not, um, this is where I was yesterday at, um, a, a classic example of that is when uh, yesterday I went to the, the Phoenix Mall, um, the St. Regis Phoenix, which I was amazed to see the, um, well, the, the mall, first class, but also it's part of the community where the, the food court area externally, where, yeah, people were relaxing and very much having a good, a good time. Um, yeah, and so centres are going to play a greater role in the cultural life of communities. Um, another classic example here, this is a, the uh, Satafi Mall in Medellin, Colombia. So they very much, their strategy was events-led. So there's events here, and so successful that they're able to charge for people coming to these events. And over the last four years, footfall has doubled. There's an example there. Yeah, so th that was a strategy which has, worked, which has worked very, very well for the mall, for the, the Santafi Mall in Medellin. Yeah, so going through conversion of centres into communities. Here are some other, uh, yeah, so look in the Middle East. Going through some, uh, uh, yeah, so no, the changes there from nodal shifts and super centres. Don't get me wrong, they're still doing some great super centres in the Middle East, but also looking at, at smaller formats. Um, yeah, and meeting the needs of increasing urbanisation, and also looking through the consumer's changing notion of, co of convenience. Um, yeah, another key thing here, like millennials, there's a big buzzword about the millennials, millennials, but they are, they are the future, and uh, you look here, some, so we need to have malls which engage with the millennials, they are the future, uh, providing, yeah, and so how do we do that? Provide a customised, personalised appeal. Once again, going back to the Westwood video, looking at that, that whole customer journey from, from before you go shopping to when you're going shopping to, yeah, how can we improve that experience? Um, yeah, a very much a heightened coordination between developers and retailers, creating a seamless and attractive entertaining environment. Uh, yeah, and looking here, uh, commonalities among millennials have big implica impl uh, uh, impl 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 implications. 82% uh, of millennials prefer to shop in stores, although they spend a great time, before they go shopping in stores, they're spending a lot of time online looking at what are the latest trends, where can I get this for the best price, and very much, yeah, price, well, web rooming. Um, yeah, and so, yeah, millennials, once again, very pr savvy and very price conscious. The, the, instead of just going to shop and buying things, they would check 10 other locations, well, check online a lot, um, to see what is the best price. Uh, and once again, yeah, food and beverage is, it's always been a, a staple of shopping centres, but becoming more important. It's all about the experience to go, yeah, pick up your pair of jeans, but then also have a bite to eat, meet with your friends and family. Yeah. Um, yeah, millennials are techies and they're foodies. Um, yeah, and also millennials prize social responsibility and sustainability. That's another key area. Uh, which, which is very, very important. Um, they want to believe in companies they, pay, they, they, they patronise. They're, they're looking for high-value experiences. They prefer city living as young families. Mixed-use schemes are, are preferred for the family living, providing, providing job and social opportunities. Um, There's another example here of the Mall Plaza in Chile, uh, positioned as a property of social hubs. So very much looking at, yeah, once again, going back to the sense of the shopping centre being very much part of the community. Um, phenomenal, they have 1.5 million Facebook followers. 
Uh, they rely, rely heavily on social media and engage with the brand to build. Um, yeah, streamed large-scale events. It's, yeah, once again, yeah, phenomenal. 1.5 million people on, on Facebook. Uh, incorporating distribution into, into the centres. Centres will, will combine retail and physical distribution points. Macy's in, in the United States, uh, their, fulfillment, their fulfillment network includes 800 stores. And they sh last year they shipped $1 billion worth of merchandise, very much allowing buy online, pick up in store, and also trialling uh, same day delivery in eight pilot markets. In the US, a group of shopping center owners uh, have invested into Delivery Inc. Uh, using a crowdsourced personnel to provide same-day delivery. Um, yeah, once again here, so this is Westwood, London, uh, uh, where they've got the, the concierge let, uh, incorporating the distribution into centres. Um, yeah, so when you look through here, so you can order online and then pick this up from, a, from the Westfield, uh, your local Westfield, so complimentary refreshments to try. Um, and it, also interesting here, you look here, 23% of, of customers purchase more when they're collecting their items they bought online. And a further, 20% of people, when they're coming to return items, buy more things. Um, so that's another, another key facet. Yeah, so incorporating, so having the shopping centers as a, distribu as a distribution point for your online shopping. Um, increased developer collaboration. Uh, I was uh, uh, fascinated and, and quite shocked when it, back in 2000, uh, when, when I come to the United Kingdom, where if you want to get in a shopping centre, you had to sign a 15-year lease, and it was very much an adversarial relationship. You sign the lease, you pay your rent on the quarter day, and we don't, yeah, that's, it wasn't partnership at all. Um, but then what you're seeing emerged, well, back then, probably one of the leading companies which I admired was a company called MacArthur Glen, uh, set up by Joey Camphor, an American who set up the, and they're the designer outlets. They had a, a total different uh, way of operating with their retailers. Instead of being 15-year leases, very much it could be a one-year lease, five-year lease, but there was no base rent. It was all done on turnover. And interestingly, every Monday morning, in the UK, they've got 10 uh, designer outlets, another 10 in Europe, but every Monday morning, all the centre managers were linked up and had a conference call, and all they talked about was retailer performance. And that's the future. We need to work, shopping centre owners need to work in partnership with, with, um, with the retailers, taking on Amazon together. Because that is the biggest threat to the shopping centre industry is Amazon. It's phenomenal. Yeah, as I said before, $10 billion spent on R&D. In the UK, £5 billion in retail sales. They are, yeah, and you're seeing, you haven't seen it in India here yet, but the, the challenges facing the industry in the United Kingdom is phenomenal. And so landlords and retailers need, uh, well, you need to heavily invest into technology, providing insights, connecting the digital and physical world of shopping, the Westfield Act, the product search feature, digital storefronts, discover products in real time. Um, yeah, so this is Westfield San Francisco, uh, retailer collaboration. We've got, um, yeah, the 2,000 square feet, square feet of demonstration space, uh, a bespoke 30,000 feet uh, facility. You've got a uh, pop-up shop, co-working and event space. So very much becoming a part of the community and retailer collaboration. Uh, yeah, and as I said before, the new blended retail model. Yeah, like in the UK, it's still, well, where 10 years ago, the focus was on a 15-year lease. Now, on average, retail is signing for five-year leases. So that's changing there. And very much, instead of just charging yeah, a base rent, it's very much working in partnership, a smaller base rent, and then, uh, and very much a turnover rent with that. And that's very much working in partnership and, and to change the model. Um, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, so the, the new blended rental model, it's got its hurdles. Like, when you look at the ICSC report, 60% of retailers run a separate, uh, a separate profit model for online. Um, many retailers are yet to master the omni-channel modes. It's costly, it's complex. Inventory management, fulfillment. Um, yes, yeah, so when you look here, uh, emerging ideas of new leasing models. So you're looking at fixed rents. You're looking at then a, a base plus turnover rents. Um, click and collect uh, uh, sales, uh, sales percentage rents, in-store online sales, uh, geocode models. So all these, yeah, so the, 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 the how, how rents are charged and uh, going to be going forward has, has changed dramatically. Um, yeah, and then also looking at, um, 
working through the rental models, looking at how, how we can uh, work through measuring the delivery of customer opportunity, net shopping hours, volume of customers, conversion rates. And as I said before, it's not just retail space, it, it is media space. Um, uh, like at Blue Water, uh, it was interesting when we did the rent reviews and worked through, the sustainability of the retailers there, this is back six, seven years ago, the rents were so high that it didn't actually make it sustainable, well, sorry, based on, on retail sales alone, it was a challenge for, for, for retailers to, um, to, to make a profit from that store. But uh, they had to be there because it was the number one mall in Europe, and so they're actually using funds from their marketing budget to top up the rents from, um, to, or to, to, make, to make the store stack up. Uh, when you look here through, the more fine metrics for purchasing volume, so you're looking at Wi-Fi, beacons, smartphone apps. Um, yeah, looking at then, looking through a retail-friendly retail investment outlook. Um, investment in the newly emerging markets is favoured. Um, there's no, there's no uh, uh, performance benchmarks. Um, but going through here, institutions uh, are favouring top-tier retail properties. Relative performance, uh, uh, high levels of reinvestment by owners. Um, and it's interesting, globally, there's going to be a, a tsunami of capital flowing into commercial real estate. Uh, nearly 10% of portfolios of investment is focused on commercial real estate. Um, super regionals outperform other property sectors. Um, NOI growth, lower, lower level of volatility. So, yeah, so it's, on one side, you've got the, on the retail and shopping industry, you've got a lot of challenges. On the other side, you've got a, a wall of money going in there. Um, and that's where you've seen like, the yields in, in, in the United Kingdom. Uh, uh, prime yields, Bl Blue Water was sold 18 months ago. The majority ownership, the, in the initial yield was about 3.9%. Um, what you're seeing on Bond Street now, Bond Street uh, in the United Kingdom, you're seeing yields now for buying property there, about 1.8% yield. So that's a, yeah, that's phenomenal yields, uh, well, phenomenally low yields for, uh, on the retail side. On secondary, the secondary yields now in the UK, you're looking between 8 9% secondary. Um, some are going double digits, but they're very challenged malls. Um, then going through here, in summary, or not in summary, but looking through the five key trends which we need to look forward and go forward through. So exceptional personalization and connection with the consumer. Creation of flexible formats. Better developer retailer collaboration. Fusion of physical stores and e-commerce. The reevaluation of a new rental model. And uh, that's, that's it for me, but uh, I'd like to thank you very much for listening. And uh, I'm happy to make copies of this presentation available if anyone would like one. And uh, yeah, I'm here for the next two days. And if you've got any questions, please let me know. Thank you. And a warm round of applause for Mr. Byron Lewis for the very informative presentation, a very insightful presentation.